What's up, tubers? Tio here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you tonight. We are finishing up Lake Palestine on the Google Earth side. So if you missed it on the last one, we went through kind of the east side of uh, Palestine. We started down at the dam, went up the east side, and stopped just outside the Neches River. And then we were going to start in the Kickapoo side tonight. So that's where we're going to head tonight. We're going to talk to you about what we found out on Palestine different types of creek channels, pond dams, all kinds of good stuff. Make sure you stick around. I know you're going to enjoy it. Let's go. Here we are on Lake Palestine on Google Earth. Now, if you've never been through any of my lake breakdown videos before, just real quick, uh, just like I always do, I want to explain what I'm doing here. So over on the left-hand side, you'll see the name of the lake. In Google Earth. And then I break it down by just different things that I see throughout each lake. You know, what are the main things? So, like on this lake, we've got all the offshore hotspots that are out there. If I uncheck all of these and I take this back up to 2022, you'll see that I have all these markers that are out there. All these markers are based on contours. When we go from here, this will probably be our last video. We may do one more on Palestine and then we'll move over to use. Uh, Navionics web app, which will actually look at the contours of the lake, and you'll see why I've picked all these different markers that are out here. We've also got rocks, we've got creek channels, so when you go up here, you can really see really good creek channels. All these green lines are tracks, and so basically you could get your boat and just follow the green line, and that is going to be keep you right inside of the creek channel. I'll show you here in a minute how we know that. We've also got pond dams, uh, or just ponds, debris, laydowns, all kinds of good stuff. And then, of course, boat ramps. You got to fish the boat ramps. That's something you never want to overlook. So let's go ahead and jump into this thing. I'm going to move this over to the side. And what we're going to do is we're going to start up here. If you missed the last video, I'll put a link at the top so you can go back and watch that video. We actually ended right here, but I went back and reviewed that video and I went through this section pretty quick. And so what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to just kind of talk about this just a little bit more because I kind of hurried through this side for some reason. And I want to go back and make sure that you guys pay really close attention to this. Because in my mind, when I go to Palestine, this right here, what you see on the screen is what I focus on. I spend a lot of time up here on this side. And I know you're probably going to think, well, that's strange because you probably hear a lot of people talking about fishing in Kickapoo. And Kickapoo's good, trust me. Uh, you know, I was talking about on the last video, one of the really good spots was was over in here when I talked about the THSBA tournament. So we definitely fish Kickapoo a lot as well. And then Flat Creek's really good down here. We'll talk about that. But anyways, I want you to focus in next time when you go to Palestine on this area up here. Now, it's basically idle only. You're going to hit stumps. Uh, if you're worried about doing any damage to your boat or anything, you might not want to come up here. But it is a great place to fish. So I just want to talk about it a little bit more and then we'll switch over and we'll talk about the other side and we'll move on because I know this is kind of a repeat, but I'm going to draw this back to 2013. And when I do that, you're going to notice that everything just becomes exposed. Uh, the water is way down. And so now you can see where I came up with these uh, different things. So we didn't really talk about it too much in the last video, but there's a really good ditch that comes right through here. You've also got this really good pond dam. I talked about it a little bit, but I didn't really put a lot of uh, stress into it. This is a very good place to fish. A very, very good place to fish. You definitely need to go check it out. Uh, and then up in here, there's a really good ditch that's up here, right in here. And then there's a pretty good little creek channel kind of running through there as well. Um, I don't know if you call it creek channel or maybe just wash out, but it all looks pretty good right in here. And then over in here, if you can get over here, there's a really good pond right here. And that's going to be clearer waters, deeper waters, definitely a lot deeper than all the other water around it. So those are really good spots to focus in on. They're a lot different. And then you've also got this pond down here that we just skimmed over, but you got a pretty good one down here too. And that's a pretty good pond dam pretty much on all four sides. So uh, all of it looks good. Even that little, the way it kind of wraps around the edge of that pond right in there looks good too. So I just wanted to go back and show you guys that, talk to you about a little bit more. There's the other one, this big, big pond dam right in here. Real good, like open, deeper area. You want to go check those out. So go check those out. I think there's a name for one of these. I can't remember. There's there's a name for this area up here, and there's a name for this over here, and then they have the old man something. It's like right around in this area. So old folks home or something like that. I can't remember what it was. Somebody's going to laugh at me when they know exactly what it is. But anyways, they got different names for these things. So if you're locals, 
Uh, if you hear the locals talk about it, you know, just you might have to ask them because they have names for all these different areas. As we move over here into Kickapoo, this is going to be new stuff. Let's take a look and see what we found over here. Now, obviously not finding a lot of big laydowns and stuff like that. Most of the timber here is going to be standing timber. But as you get back in here, you're going to notice there's some underwater, there's an underwater road and there's an underwater bridge that's right in here. A lot of people crappie fish off here. There's also been some really big bass caught right around here as well. So don't be scared to come out here and fish around this bridge. That is a good area to fish. Uh, sometimes over here in these pillars can be good as well. And then as you move over into here, just a couple things I wanted to point out. Um, one thing was right in here. There's actually a pretty good pond right here with a pretty good pond dam that goes right up against the back edge of that, uh, that little island that's right there. Now, I've never actually came over here and fished this, but I definitely will. I'm going to come over here and check it out next time because it seems to be really right out in the open. I don't see a lot of people fishing in that area too much, but when you look at it on Google Earth, it definitely sticks out as being a good, good area to look at. Also, if you look really closely right here, there's a big levee that's right here. So I'll zoom in here so you can see it. Against this levee is very good fishing, um, especially right in there where that where it makes that uh, that creek channel bend comes up and swings up against the levee right there. Right in here is a very good area to fish. So definitely check that out. Uh, you can also come over here. We've got another, looks like what used to be maybe a pond that's over here. This one's not as defined as the other ones but still a, definitely a lot deeper area than everything else that's around there. And then if you come over here, right here, there's a bunch of cypress trees right around in here, right really close to that creek channel bin. That is a very good area to take a look at. All Pretty much if you just draw a square like right here, just draw a box right there, that's going to be a really good spot to fish. The reason why, one, you've got cypress trees, which you can't see here, but you'll probably see in a later image. Two, you've got a creek channel bend that's coming right through here. So that's really nice. And it comes up and it actually touches right in here. And then just having this levee here is nice because it's giving you some rock or some kind of cover that they can actually uh, be attracted to. And then all up in here is all good fishing. What I did was I basically just uh, marked the main creek channel that I could find. So you guys can follow that. You've got the creek channels up here as well. Somewhere up in here, from what I hear, the pros were up in here somewhere. They said they were way, way in the back of Kickapoo. So it's got to be right up in here. And they said they found an area that had really clear water. So let's see if we can figure out where in the world. I'm thinking, guys, maybe they were up in here. Uh, anyways, if you know, let us know. But this definitely looks like an area where it's a lot cleaner. Uh, you can see it's a lot clearer there. So let's see if we draw that up. If it gets any clearer, I bet it doesn't. But. Yeah, this isn't going to help us out. Definitely a lot of cover and stuff up there, though, but this is a really good area to fish. Kickapoo's known to be a, a really good place to catch some big ones. So definitely if you come out here, go check out Kickapoo Creek. Here's all your different markers that are here as well. And then back over here, there's actually an old pond that's here. And if you look right here, there's a pond dam right in there. That would be if I'm going to come over here and fish, there's some reeds and stuff that you could fish around here as well. But this pond dam might be interesting just to slide off and just kind of check it out. Most people are probably just going to drive right by it. All right. So as we move over in here, this was just a little path that I gave myself to get over to the boat ramp and then back to the uh, the actual pass. If you get the boat lanes from uh, from Pat Mays, I believe is his name. If you get the boat lanes, they'll actually take you right to these power lines. So as we move down here, uh, one thing that you have here is you got like a little creek channel that kind of comes through here. Now, this gets extremely shallow right in here. But this is that old folks area that I was telling you about, just right around in this area, this whole area right up in here and all of this around this corner, I believe, is the old folks area. Uh, but anyways, the good, good spot to fish. Definitely go check that out. As we move on down here, now we're going to kind of get out of the, the shallow stuff and kind of look at some more main lake stuff. One thing to note is make sure you have boat lanes when you get out on this lake. You can see here there's timber everywhere. You will tear your boat up on the north end. Uh, trying just trying to get up there. So make sure that you get the boat lanes before you come out here. Now, if you look really closely on this image, you'll notice there's a little ditch that comes right in through here. It looks like maybe it's an old boat ramp or something like that, but that could be an interesting place to take a look at. You've got a boat ramp down in here off this main point. You've got another boat ramp that's kind of hidden right in there that I marked for you guys. Again, not too much going on in here. You get down here by these houses, you get a little bit of stuff. You got a couple ramps, probably just some community ramps got another community ramp there. 
You do have a little bit of rock that's up along this wall. So if I draw this up to a better image, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Let me zoom in here. You'll notice there's a lot of rock against that little seawall there. Actually goes from here to about right there. So if you're fishing those two docks, get back behind those docks and focus in on that area right there. All right, so let's draw this back to 13 so we can see what we can find. Of course, now it's going to be so blurry, we're not going to be able to see it. And draw that back a little bit. Coming back in here, didn't see too much, you know, no big laydowns or brush piles that, that I could really see. Now, there is a lot of rock right around in here in this area. Very shallow, but this could be a really good spot to, to, to go take a look at. It's shallow, yes, but it's right off of a main lake point. That could be really good. If we look at it when the water's up, you can see that the water comes all the way up to it and actually touches it. So this can be a really good area just right from basically right here to really right around that point. Put a lot of focus right in there where that rock is. So let's draw this back to 2013. Probably making you guys dizzy going back and forth. One more and we're going to keep going. All right. So as we come over here, this, this looked interesting, kind of a high spot, but I don't see any rock or anything like that. Maybe come out and fish out here, you know, just around these trees and stuff that, that could be a, have some potential there, but really nothing I can mark for you guys. we got another ramp that's right in here. As we move further back in here, we've got a little creek channel that comes through here. You can see it kind of, I don't know how in the world all this works. This little ditch comes out, I think connects to this creek channel. And then this creek channel goes way up in here and you can kind of follow it around. Really what I would do is focus wherever it touches. So if it touches right in here, I would fish definitely for sure in that area and then just follow it. And if it makes any big turns, maybe just scan in those areas where those big turns are. And then definitely look at that, uh, where that junction is right there between those two creek channels, between the pond coming out, the old pond, and the creek channel being there, and, and take a look at that as well. You've also got a pretty good little ditch. So if I zoom this in, you'll see there's a pretty good little ditch right in here. Sets up pretty nice, right up against that little seawall. Definitely worth taking a look at if you're over there on that side. There is a potential pond in here too. I couldn't really tell, so I couldn't mark it, but something's going on right in here. You can kind of see a little bit of a shape that's in this area. Got a couple boat ramps that are there that you could fish if you're back there behind those docks. And then coming down through here, finally found a little bit more stuff. Let me pull this back and you're gonna see that there's some tires in here. Thought I was the farthest back I could go, but let me see if I can find them. So we can't go any farther back than that. So somehow I got on a different image and was able to see some tires in there. So maybe it was on this image. I'm not sure. I can't really see it that well right now on my screen, but I'm going to trust that I found those tires somewhere on some year that lake had to be down. Let's just go back to 13. We're going to trust there's some tires there because I saw them at some point and we're going to keep on moving. That could be Google Earth playing tricks on me as well. Sometimes you'll come out here on Google Earth and you can go to a certain year. And then you'll come back, I promise you, people think I'm crazy, but you'll come back and you can't get back to that same year that you were looking at. It just blows my mind. I don't know why it does that. But anyways, let's go ahead and keep breaking this thing down. we got more ramps right there. We've got a brush pile that's right in here. You can see it, just that little dark area right in there. Looks very promising. Got another ramp that's back here as well. Then as we swing around here, there's some pillars that are out here. You might want to take a look at it. It looks about right in here. You'll see these pillars. I don't want to keep moving this up too much because I'm going to make you guys sick, but there's some dock pillars that are right, right in this area. So definitely go check that out. You've got some debris and some laydowns that are out around this dock. And then if you look here, you've got some rock that's all along this shoreline right here, right along this point, basically just that whole area right there. Really shallow, but most of these points have rocks on the, you know, on the edge of them. The problem is a lot of them just really aren't that deep. Like if we pull this back to 2012, you'll see it's just not that deep. That's how we were able to find the debris and the laydowns there. This rock is way shallow. So moving on up here, we've got some more debris out here. We've got some brush piles that are out here now. You can see them. Moving down, you've got a little bit of a laydown right there. Not sure if it's too much. And you got another one that's kind of right there, but it's really hard to say. And they could be washed out by now as well. And then as we move over in here, we're kind of getting back into Flat Creek or Flat Bay. So a lot of people I've heard refer to it as Flat Creek. But as we move back in here, we've got some tires that are over here as well. I don't know what image I saw these tires on, but they're there. 
We've got some rock that's over here as well. As I move a little bit further back, uh, a ramp there, there is a brush pile real close to that ramp. So if you're over here fishing this ramp, kind of just turn behind you and see if there's a brush pile right there behind you. It's almost, almost right in line with where that ramp is. Then up here, you've got a couple more ramps. So three more ramps. You got a little bit of rock around that ramp. You've got an underwater bridge down here too, so you got to be really careful crossing through here, but there is an underwater bridge. You definitely want to take a look at that one. You've got some rip rapids over here too that looks pretty promising. And I really like fishing up in flat. It's just, it's not as crazy as, as Kickapoo when it comes to stumps, but you still got to be careful. You've got ramps up here as well. A lot of ramps just right around this little point. Unfortunately, that's about all there was. There wasn't a lot of debris or anything like that. There was some rock that's right here if I zoom in, you'll see it. It's right there on the edge right there. So just outside of that dock, almost looks like a man-made rock pile that somebody put in there. you got some debris out here too, and then you've got a little mini boat ramp that's back there too you could check out. Coming down in here, you've got just a, a pretty good ditch that basically where all of this washes out. You can see that that ditch has basically been created there. So I've just kind of marked the edges of that ditch so you can see, but definitely would be worth going in and check it out. Sometimes they'll relate to those ditches really well. So always good areas to go look at. You got some more laydowns that are over in here, just some bigger laydowns. I don't know why I can't see the same thing that I saw last time. It's driving me crazy. And then we also have just basically the creek channel. So you've got the main creek channel that comes back here. You can get pretty far back in there. But if you wanted to just follow the creek channel, you could definitely follow it there. And then again, focusing on the bends and the turns, right? So here's a good area to look at. And here would be a good area to look at right in here, up here, over here, just all the different areas where it turns or if it touches the land anywhere, you definitely want to fish that as well. So then coming back out of flat, we're going to start kind of running out of stuff because we don't see as much coming down here. But you do have an old boat that was in here. And see, this image is not treating me right, but let's see if we can find it one more time because I saw an image of a boat when this lake was down pretty far. And maybe we'll get lucky and find them a try one more time and see if we get lucky. We are not going to get lucky. Go over here and scan in this area where I have it marked as boat, and I promise you there's a sunken boat there unless someone's cleaned it up. Uh, but there's a sunken boat there. I was able to see it on one of these images. And for some reason tonight, I just can't get to that exact image. But there's a sunken boat right there. There's also some laydowns uh, that are in that area as well. So anyways, go back in here. It's just outside that bridge. Just come straight over and it'll be right in this area right here. As we come back over here, we've got a couple more underwater bridges you could fish, both of those. And then we get back outside of the marina there. As we come down this bank line, there's really not too much to show you guys. There is a ramp there. Um, something to check here. Almost looks like a pile of something, maybe a rock pile or a huge laydown. Wasn't sure, but I just put to check that. And then moving down, you've got another ramp. And then again, a long stretch of bank lines with just nothing, right? Just dirt, plain Jane, nothing. And it looks like I missed a ramp that was back in here to this house. The house looks awesome. There's a ramp back in there if you want to go back in there, but that watercolor looks very interesting. Coming back in here again, not seeing too much, no rocks, no laydowns, no, no really anything until you get way down here. And then finally you just get in, find another ramp. And then back here in Caney Bay, it looks like you've got a pretty good little creek channel that comes through here. So you could go check that out. I would put a ton of focus in this area right here where that creek channel swings up against the land right there. That's going to be a good area to fish. And then maybe come out here and look at some of these big bins, these sharp ones, and just see if you can find anything out there that could have some potential as well. Coming off here, just a couple things I wanted you guys to check. There's something in the water there. I couldn't tell what it was. Same thing right in here. This also looks like a really good point. So there could be some potential rock off this point. I'm not sure, but I just like how it sets up. And so I definitely wanted you guys to go out there and check that. I haven't had a chance to check that one yet. I haven't been on the south end of Palestine to go check that, but definitely want to go look at it. We've also got some debris that's down in here. Over here, this is like one of the few points, but it looks like you've got some rock way out here off the edge of this point. So go out here and look at that. It's probably probably marked as one of my offshore spots as well. You got a couple ramps in here, some shallow rock that's back here. 
this image is really hard to tell. If I move it up, you'll be able to see, but there's a little bit of rock that's just right along this whole shoreline right here. And then it comes out and comes over and comes out to about right here. So this whole area right here is shallow rock. And then as we move on down here, we're getting a little bit closer to the old dam. I thought we were. Yeah, I think we can finish this. Let's see if we can finish it. Hopefully it's not too long. Got some more rock right in here. And then we got some rock right here around this bridge too. As we move on down, we've got some stumps that are right here off of this little point. So those are always interesting to find. If you can find a little stump area that's isolated like that, main lake, sometimes that can really produce you some good fish. So you want to go check that out. You've got a little brush pile that's back here as well. That could be helpful. You've got a pond, an old pond that's in here. Maybe an old pond could be a, where someone just dredged it out, but it almost looks like a pond. It doesn't really look like somebody dredged it out. But anyways, a deeper spot for sure to go look at. As we move back in here, Leadbetter Bay, this is a pretty cool area to fish. There's tons of reeds everywhere. But back in here, you got a little creek channel back in here. You've got another one back in here. And again, just a lot of reeds all along the bank line right in here. Good little spawning area for them to get in. Good little area to fish. This marina is a pretty good area to fish around as well. It's got a pretty decent little seawall that's back there. So this area in general, even though it don't, I don't have a lot of marks markers in this area, this is a very good area to fish uh, on Lake Palestine for sure. As we move on down, we've got another pond that's back here. Not sure if you can, I guess you can get access to it, but a real good pond dam right in there. Let's go check that out. I should have checked that out a couple weekends ago. Moving down here, we've got some debris as well. So right here, this looks like it could be like an old pond dam. But you got a couple different little rock piles or something that's out there. Nice little creek channel that's back in there as well. And then moving down here, just another ramp. There's a pretty decent little ditch that's back here. So if you go down here to this cob inlet, again, uh, back in here, there's all kinds of vegetation back in here. So you definitely want to go back there and look at that. And for whatever reason, that where that green line is, is like the deeper spot or where that grass isn't. So you could go and just kind of work the edges of that stuff following that little green line. But up here, if you look up here, there's a little ditch up here as well and a real clear, clear area right in here where it's a little bit deeper. So that, that could be something to, uh, to take a look at for sure. A lot clearer water down here as well, which could be interesting. Coming through here, we've got another ramp. And then we kind of start shooting straight down. And unfortunately, I didn't find anything all through here. So this whole little arm right in here just didn't find anything really to mark for you guys. Not to say that's not good areas to fish. There just wasn't anything there that I could put a little waypoint on there for you guys. So until we get way down here, all we have left is just these two little ramps. This one's pretty far in the water. So you might want to go check this one out. Um, it almost looks like it might even be an old roadbed. So it may connect over here as well. Go look at that. It says ramp, but it could be a roadbed as well. You've got a ramp here too. And then you get down here and you've got the main deep end uh, boat ramp that's down there as well. And that wraps us up for Lake Palestine. So the next time I come back, I will be talking to you guys about the Navionics mobile app. We're going to go look at the contour lines for this lake and see what we can find from an offshore perspective. Hey, I really appreciate everybody's support. Please make sure you go out and check out the website, simplisticfishing.com. You can get all these waypoints plus the offshore stuff all put on an SD card for you where all you have to do is just plug it into your graph. I'm telling you, it will change the way you fish. Go check it out, simplisticfishing.com. And until next time, guys, hope you catch your PB. Take it easy.